Welcome back. So today's video is the first in a series on pricing, uh, pricing options. And so firstly, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of pricing options. Um, so options have actually been around for a very long time. Uh, there are option-like contracts that have existed since, uh, since ancient Greece. Uh, they, they wouldn't have been options as we recognize them today, like sort of put and call options, but they would have been agreements to pay a certain amount of money up front for the right to reserve, we'll say, olive presses and things like that. That's sort of the, the very first uh, example of a, an option that, uh, that people can find. And so they've been around for a long time, but actually pricing formulas did not exist until the 1970s. The very first uh, options pricing formula was published in 1973, and that's the Black-Scholes-Merton model. Um, a few years after that, I guess about six years later, in 1979, uh, the binomial tree model was released by Cox, Ross and Rubenstein. Uh, before the existence of these models, though, people did trade options and they they were able to come up with prices for those options and the prices were actually kind of fair. You know, they, without a model, people were still able to work out what a reasonable amount to charge for uh, for these these uh, contracts was. Um, and actually, what we find is that once the models came out. The prices didn't actually change massively, so there was a there was a, a, a certain sense to what people were charging. Now the big difference is that the options market was actually very small uh, before these pricing formulas came about. So um, instead of uh, you know the the thousands of people who trade derivatives on a daily basis that we have today, there would have been a small niche group of people who had a lot of market experience and who sort of understood the risks and understood how much uh, you know, a given underlying was likely to move in a given period of time and could appropriately price that option. And uh, obviously, if you were in the business of doing this and you were coming up with the wrong prices, uh, you, you would uh, bankrupt yourself over time. And so the pricing formula showed us quite a few things. Uh, you know, the, when, when we talk about uh, the Black-Scholes model, I, in my classes I point out that it's probably the greatest breakthrough in finance in the last hundred years. And probably the, the, the great breakthrough before that was, uh, was the idea of present value in cash flows. You know, so it's, it's a big, big deal. But what's special about it is not so much just that it told us, you know, mathematically the price of an option. What's special about it is it showed us how options behave as well, and thus we were able to hedge options positions by trading in the underlying, and we were actually able to create other, uh, we, we were able to create option-like payouts without actually having options exist just by a trading strategy, which is actually specified by the Black-Scholes model, and we'll learn about that in a later video that I'll do um, on dynamic hedging. So generally options pricing models depend on the following factors. So the spot price and the strike price will obviously matter a lot in pricing an option. Uh, the cost of holding a position in the underlying, including things like the interest rate and, and uh, dividends will matter. The length of time to expiration will matter, and that should be obvious to you that uh, an option that expires in a, a longer period of time is more valuable than an option that expires uh, uh, in a short amount of time. Um, the volatility of the underlying security, and that's kind of a big deal, and that's really one of the innovations that these early models uh, brought to the table was that if we could uh, you know, if, if we could uh, model the behavior of the underlying as sort of a random process with a, a given standard deviation that we could then price price options. And, um, and those are sort of the important factors that we use in, in pretty much all of our models for pricing options. Now, before these models did exist, 
we did know that options prices were made up of this combination of intrinsic value and uh, and time value and I've, I've done a prior video on that if you want to take a look at that but um, yeah but before before we had these models we knew that an option was worth more than its intrinsic value and by that I mean that that we'll say if the underlying is trading at a hundred and there's an option with a call option with a strike price of 95 we would say that that is five dollars in the money and has intrinsic value of five dollars but a rational investor would be happy to pay more than that for that option simply because it has this unlimited upside and capped downside um, and that is manifested as time value in the option so Options contracts can be thought of and were thought of as a lot like insurance uh, contracts before before these models came about. And as early as 1350 in Palermo, uh, shipping insurance did exist. Shipping insurance was kind of amongst the first types of insurance. And um, a popular contract at the time, popular insurance contract, was a conditional sale where the insurer agreed to buy the ship and cargo should it fail to arrive at its destination. And so in order to price that kind of derivative, what you have to do is you have to look at the present value of the probability of the payout times the size of the payout. Okay, So if you think there's a 10% chance of the ship sinking, you multiply 0.1 times the amount of money you'd have to pay out, and then you discount it to its present value in order to take into account the time value of money. And so before, um, before uh, options pricing models existed, essentially people tried to price options using that sort of approach where they'd say, well, what is the probability of, the, uh, of this underlying moving up or down uh, through the strike price and, and what is the likely payout? And, and they, they actually came up with reasonable values based upon that. And it was really more of an iterative approach than anything else. So a big breakthrough in, uh, in the pricing of options was Louis Bachelier, a French mathematician in 1900, modeled the stochastic process that we call Brownian motion. Uh, he, he built a mathematical model of it in his PhD thesis, which was called The Theory of Speculation. And it was actually the first paper using advanced mathematics in finance. Now, the paper actually didn't go that far, uh, didn't uh, get that much interest at the time, and that was largely because the kind of people who were interested in mathematics weren't interested in finance, and the kind of people who were interested in finance weren't interested in mathematics. But that model was then taken up uh, many years later in in nineteen uh, in the early nineteen seventies by uh, by the creators of the Black Scholes Merton formula, in order to build the uh, the the Black Scholes model and of course a lot of our other models in finance are based upon that. So that's kind of a quick history of um, of options pricing. And in our next video, we're going to look at the binomial tree approach. Um, we'll look at the first the portfolio approach to pricing derivatives using a binomial tree. So see you then. Bye. <laughs>